5,000 years. My vision has shown me the world in flames. The battle you're meant to fight is upon us. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. Here we go. So you saw where Dr. Fate is now confirmed to be in the Black Adam movie. It's been out for a little bit, but today we're going to do a little breakdown of what this character actually means and uh, does he stand for justice? So he is the creator of the Justice Society of America, right? Um, what, like, is he about justice? So let's do a little breakdown. So Kent is the name of the, the embody, the host of Dr. Fate. Uh, in an archaeological dig, he stumbled across an entombed person that was, when let out, poison was spread and he killed his father and in that moment he made a deal to put on this helmet in the city of Ur. Yep, city of Ur. They don't, they, they're going right for it in it. Um, to put this helmet on and gain power but he would be a host for the character Naboo. And it, it's actually based off of a Mesopotamian deity, right? If you're unfamiliar with it, he is the son of Marduk, right? Which is the Lord of Chaos and a lot of early Christian, like, not Christian, but Jewish culture. He's the antithesis to, to the Lord, you know, Yahweh, the creator God. He's about order and justice, true order and justice, where modern is a God of chaos, right? And so Nabu is the son of this entity, right? If you actually look into it. Then he, as uh, Dr. Fate, right, in his arc incarnations, right, he was a uh, influencer, right, of Ramses. And if you're unfamiliar with this, Ramses is supposed to be the king that had was enslaving the Jews, right? And that Moses led them from. Well, in the comic books, the, there's a character called the Spectre, and he's supposed to be the vengeance of God, whatever. Um, he comes in and defeats Naboo for helping Ramses and kills Ramses for what he did to the Jewish people. So, as a character that is written in his history, he stood against God's people. So, there's another instance right there. Let's talk about some of his uh, items he wears. The helmet, right? It it gives the ability to, for Naboo to possess whatever host wears it, right? That bestows all the basic abilities, I guess you would say, of the character, you know? His magical abilities, his abilities to mess with time, space, you know? Magic characters kind of do, do crazy stuff, and they, they always like to try to make magic really powerful, you know? That definitely shows you motivation there. Then he has the amulet of Anubis, right? That's a god of death, right? So he's gaining power from death, right? So he is he is part of that, right? And then his cloak, right? It's, it's just a magical cloak. There's nothing really specific there um, other than the story behind it. He was led by one of the lords of order to craft it as a uh, embodiment of power. And again, just subversion all over the place. Another thing about the actual historical character of Naboo, it was he was a fertility god, you know, not necessarily in terms of that stuff, but like making plants grow and then a god of wisdom and all these things, you know, again, another character that takes aspects from true Yahweh, huh? They always like putting these things in there, right? Magic characters are, are leaders of justice and you know, being a host for spiritual entities is good and to be a hero. Think about these things, right? It's obvious the subversion they're pointing in. There's coming a time where everybody is going to be about like embodying a certain spirit. You already hear musicians talk about it in different ways. And now they're trying to really push that character, Dr. Fate, because a lot of characters are gaining, you know, the helmet and being, oh, it's, it's how powerful they are now that they have that helmet. It's, it's, it's a trap, it's a deception, right? We should be an embodiment of the Holy Spirit, right? And the only way to gain access to that is through believing in Jesus Christ. And even in scripture it says, the faith of a mustard seed could move mountains. It could say to this tree, be plucked up and dropped in the ocean, it would. But we wouldn't do so because we knew, we know God's the one who placed those things there. And the things that we're moving are spiritual mountains, right? In a way that these worldly people are moving people spiritually using physical things, but we're separate from that. And I, you know, I know from my walk and my journey, if you live a life of Christ, it has an effect on people around you, right? And it's more powerful than anything of the world. So I want you to think about these things. Take a close look at these characters. Realize what you're, you know, lifting up, calling heroes, exalting. I, you know, just think about it. That's all. Have a blessed day.